Well, hello lads, how's it going? Welcome back to the workshop. At the minute, I've been slowly working on this Dutch tool chest here to the right of me, and today I'm gonna to work on the frame and panel doors that open out in the front here. Now, I was practicing the joints this morning and I, uh, I came up with something that looks like this. I'm not exactly too sure of the name, but uh, I know it'll probably work. Now, there's not a whole lot of strength in the joint like this on its own, but when we have the four of them done, uh, and we also have this fella here, so the four pieces of wood around the edge will make the frame, and this piece here, I've just tongue and grooved some southern yellow pine together, so that will make up the panel. So we'll plane that down nice and thin and insert it in here as the panel, and hopefully that will work as one of the two doors that open up our Dutch tool chest. So the first thing I need to do is get everything lined up here, and to start off, I have my southern yellow pine pieces and I can just chuck them in the vise here and I'm going to use the, the big plane you see there, the standing number eight, um, and I'm going to use that to make one perfect flat plane and we can use that as our reference plane for getting the rest of the piece of wood square and even. Now obviously if I had machines I'd just feed it through a jointer and then thickness it and it would be done in two seconds but I want to build this entire box using only hand tools because I want it to only store hand tools. And when it's done um, with this box that I should be able to take around the country to all the festivals and fairs, I'll have every single tool I need to make virtually any piece of furniture. Now there might be a few exceptions like um, the big uh, frame saws or panel saws, but uh, that's not the point. I think with one box like this, especially a box this big, I should be able to have plenty tools to make whatever I need. Hello Lucy, are you joining us today? You are? No, she gets kind of scared when she sees the plane. There she is now, happy out, drinking from puddles. Say what you want about using hand tools, there's nothing quite as satisfying as doing it all by hand. You know, anyone can feed timber through a machine with a bit of training, but you know, you kind of have to develop a bit of skill when you're doing everything by hand. And it's, I think it's a bit more rewarding when you have everything done. Not to mention, a jointer, a jointer plane like this might cost you one or two hundred quid. A big massive jointer table would take up a load of room and cost you maybe five or six times one of these. But yeah, for me it's not even an option. I don't have room for a jointer table, so this beauty will have to do. So once I have my reference plane perfectly true, I can just grab a square here and I can use this reference plane to make sure everything is nice and square. We can see this one isn't, so we need to chuck it back in the vise real quick and use our number eight to get that square with the reference plane. So just after a few passes like that, we're probably getting there. And yeah, we're slight bit off, so we can use the lateral adjuster on our plane here to just slightly adjust the iron, and that should fix our problem after a few passes. And there we go, now we have it perfectly square, and we can move on to the other side back here. So now that we have our pieces nice and square, we need to cut the groove that the panel will sit into in a minute. See this fella here? So I have a Stanley number 50 combination plane and all I'm going to do is throw the pieces of wood into my vise here like this. See which way the grain is going to make life easier for us. And basically just come along with the number 50 here and just run it along like that until we get the whole groove the whole way down to where our depth gauge is here. So. The modern carpenter would probably use a table saw or a router table or something to get this done, but this is just as easy, I reckon, and is a bit more satisfying. And again, we don't need electricity to do it, so. Another thing I must do to make sure all the ends are square is bring up to the shooting board here, grab my plane and just literally shoot like that. We can see that they are a perfect 90 degrees. So with our groove cut and everything squared up, the first joint, I want to cut is the mortise that'll sit at the end. So in order to cut that mortise, which is for reference, um, this fella here uh, that slots in, I'm going to grab my tenon saw here and I'm just gonna line it up like that into the groove and just cut down to where it meets the line. So I don't think I've actually drawn in the line yet on this side, so we'll start with this side up here. So yeah, it's just a matter of grabbing our saw and just moving our hand backwards and forward and letting the saw do the work. Once I have two cuts made there, I can come along with my chisel. Now, 
I have a kind of finer chisel here, but I also have a mortising chisel somewhere, which is this fella that can handle a bit more of a beating. So I'm going to make sure we have it properly in our vise there now, locked into place. Going to grab it, line up our chisel and just go like that. Now I'm going to scoop out some excess material with it as well. You can see there now it's coming out nicely enough. And we're just going to do that until we get a nice square corner in the bottom that this fella can sit into. So once I have the brunt of the work done, I can come along with the finer chisels then and pair everything out. But for now, we're just going to use some mortising chisels. Once we have a cut, we can bring it up to this fella here and just see if we can slot it into place real quick. So just put it up like that. And there we go. When I have everything glued and um, clamped together, it should fit a bit tighter, but for now, this will do the trick. For the tenon part then, we're just going to use our marking gauge here to mark out all the pieces we want to keep. Then we'll just come along with our saw and cut off the parts we don't. We can also come along with our chisel here and mark out where this part needs to cut as well, or where the shoulder is going to be. Then I have a little Japanese saw here, I'm just going to come along to cut out them shoulders. So once we have everything like that, we can just use our chisel here to kind of pare away the excess just so it slides in a bit easier. All right, there we go. So that looks like it will fit once it gets a bit of, bit of glue. And a few clamps that should fit snug. There we go. So I think now I just have two joints left to do, this one and this one. So I'm making a TikTok as well. So I'll cut these joints on my phone. So we have the panel done here and it's time to cut the frame. So I have it lined out into the size we need to get it to. And I'm just gonna chuck it in to the end vise here before I cut it with the saw. So I have an old distant cross cut here and we're just gonna line it up and cut down along the line. So, so once we have our line cut, I'm gonna bring it onto the shooting board again and use that to get it all nice and square. So I have all this squared and leveled and the next thing I need to do is come along with my marking gauge here and just kind of scribe in a small bit and just run it along the corner like this and that lets us know what we need to plane the corners down to so that they'll fit in to the groove we cut on the frame. I'm also going to get my gauge and mark in a bit and that will kind of let me know what parts I can start planing down towards those edges and there'll be a square in the middle here this part that we leave pretty much untouched. So the next thing we need to do is go back into the vise back here, grab our plane and start planing all the corners in towards that thing we just cut there. Well lads, so I think we have it all pretty much ready to go. I've just after dry fitting it and uh, it fit fairly nicely. So I'm gonna fold all this out and um, I'm going to glue it all together, so I'm just going to grab some glue here now. Hopefully this hasn't seized up on me. Um, and we're just going to fill in all the cracks and joints with glue. And then leave it sit overnight in a few clamps. So let's see how this goes now. Gluing always kind of scares me because it's, it's pretty irreversible. Once it's done, it's done. But um, I put the dry fit up against the toolbox and it seemed to be an okay fit. So, you know, I'm not too bothered about this thing not being perfect, but we'll try to get it as best we can. Once it's all done, then I'll um, come along with some sandpaper and I'll uh, finish it like that. But uh, for now, I think this, this is what we're rolling with. So I'm in the process of just gluing everything together now. So hopefully this fella will sit right into place when we drop it in. So, so the last thing I need to do is just cover the whole thing in glue and then drive it home. So hopefully now, this will stay in place for us for many years to come. Oh, that was satisfying. 
So now I'm just gonna make some minor adjustments, a bit of tuning with the hammer, or the mallet even, and then I'm gonna clamp it together and leave it. So the last thing that's left to do is clamp the bejesus out of it, and then we can come back tomorrow and see how it glued up. So I'm just gonna do some last minute tweaking there, seeing if we can get everything nice and square, and for the most part, it looks like we're okay. Yep, that'll do. I don't mind them being a small bit off. I can fix that with a plane when I'm installing them, but if they're totally out of square, I don't know what I'll do. Yep, that's pretty good, I think. Right, so lads, I'm gonna leave this sit overnight and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Well, lads, it's actually two days later and I'm after installing that one we just made and it closes grand and easy. The second one I also have right here. So that's been gluing up for the last 24 hours. So we'll just take that out of its clamps and then plane it to size and hopefully have the two of them fitted fairly shortly. We're just gonna do a quick dry fit, make sure it's not too big or small in any direction. And uh, it looks to be far too tall. So unless I have it in wrong, do I? Which I absolutely did. So yeah, it's the perfect width, but it's probably maybe two or three millimeters too tall. So I'm just gonna come along with a hand plane and trim it down. It's always better to go a bit too big than a bit too small because it's a lot more difficult to add wood than it is to shave it away. So. What we're gonna do first is move this chest back over here to its corner. Gee, she's heavy. It's gonna be a difficult chest to move around when it's done. Probably need two people. I might um, see if I can get it on some caster wheels or something. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna grab it here. Uh, I have what's called an end tail vise here that I'm just gonna open up at the end and then we can grab the bench dogs, which are these fellas here, and just drop them into place here and here. And once we have them in place, that allows us to work on the actual piece itself. So that should grip it good and strong. Now these dogs are gonna damage the ends, so I'm gonna plane it to the right thickness first before I um, plane the sides, and then I can plane off all the marks the dogs leave behind, so. Where is it now? I'm gonna take the low angle, number 62 here, and just spend a few minutes getting everything back down to the same level once again. As I mentioned, it is a bit too tall, so the first cause of action is to throw it in to the vise here. Uh, grab this Japanese plane, which we restored in the last video, and I've really enjoyed using it ever since and just use that to shave down a couple of millimeters off the top here. So this is gonna be a relatively quick process, I'd say. The Japanese hand planes take a bit of getting used to. I'd say my technique is totally off, but hopefully over the years now of using these, I'll get a bit better. But normally with the Western ones, you're pushing into it, it's a bit easier. I'll see there, if I can give you an example of the 62 here. But, uh, this is set to shave about a thousandth of an inch off, so this is just a little bit more satisfying to use when it does work. So we'll just do that for a few minutes. I'm gonna be testing it the whole time, seeing does it fit. And um, when I'm done, we'll put the hinges on. So while I was planing the sides here, uh, a part of the frame cracked off, so should be an easy enough fix because it's a clean break along the grain. So what we'll do is we'll just grab some of our glue here and just rub it the whole way along the crack. Plenty of it on there, probably too much. Just rub it in with our finger just so it's covering the entire area of the crack. Yeah, definitely put way too much on, but look what harm. Better too much than too little. And then we're just gonna throw it back into place and I'm just gonna clamp it back. The only problem now is that that'll probably set me back a couple of hours while I wait for that to settle. Um, but that's no harm. We'll. Uh, We'll move on to something else and uh, I'll talk to you when this has finished setting. So it's been a few hours and it's back in action again. I have the hinges here and we're just gonna line them up like this. Find where they meet the edge here. Come along with the mallet and lock it into place. I'm also gonna set this marking gauge here to just about the thickness of the hinge itself and then come along and transfer that onto the wood. 
good and deep on both sides and then I can just carefully come along with the chisel and spend a few minutes shaving down to that line. I'm definitely going to have to come along with the chisel a few times to, to confirm that I don't go out over the edge but maybe if we go bevel down we might go a bit quicker. So I think that's a pretty good fit now, so I'm going to come along with the hinge next and yeah, that fits in very nicely all together, so we're just going to place that in there like that. So then we're going to come along with this drill here that I restored last night and we're kind of just testing it out at the minute. And we're just going to drill a quick pilot hole, just like that, and then I'm going to come along with my brace and bit if I can find them somewhere and that will just make it nice and quick to drive the whole thing home. There we go. Well, here they are now, both fitted. Um, they swing open and closed, fairly loose, no real problems. Bit of a gap there now that I'm not too happy about but I'll manage, I can live with that. I had a bit of difficulty hanging this fellow over here, that's why there's no footage of it. But uh, I think it turned out alright and uh, once we have everything painted black on the outside, I'll leave the inside pine, I think it should look pretty good. But um, yeah, all that's left to do now really is um, work on the lid here. I'm going to have the hinges there uh, eventually. But sound for watching, hope you learned something about making um, frame and panel uh, doors from this video. Uh, and I'll talk to you again in the next one. Good luck.